Hi everyone, welcome to the session of our web series Fireside Chat with Champions, in which we interview global business leaders, asking them crowdsourced questions relevant to the biggest challenge you face today, COVID-19, and its impact on various aspects of business and the way we can steer ourselves in current uncertainties. Today we have with us a very, very special guest, Dr. Badri Narayan Goparkrishnan. Dr. Badri is the co-founder and director of Infinite Sum Modeling, an economic analytics-backed strategy consulting firm with presence in Canada, USA, India, and China. He is an affiliate faculty member with University of Washington, Seattle. He is also associated with McKinsey and Companies since 2015 as a senior consulting economist. In addition, he is on board of directors and or advisors, advisor of several companies and organizations like UNESCO, Artnet. British American Business Council, Policy Modeling Association for Inclusive Development, etc. He has also founded a couple of non-profit think tanks in India and USA. Thanks, Dr. Badri, for accepting our invitation. I would request you to let our viewers know a bit more about you and your current activities of interest. Floor is for you, Mr. Badri. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Deepak Parikh, for inviting me for, to do this five-side five chat. Uh, I'm uh, 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 very delighted to be part of this and share my thoughts and um, uh, thanks for the introduction. And I'm uh, currently, uh, I have been uh, pursuing a lot of uh, uh, policy research and advisory projects uh, for various uh, governments in the world and international organizations. Like uh, you also pointed out United Nations and also World Bank. Um, Asian Development Bank and several other uh, Commonwealth Secretariat uh, and several other uh, international organizations. Uh, and I'm at the moment I'm doing a lot of work on uh, analyzing the global economic impact of uh, COVID crisis um, uh, and and also looking at the uh, looking at not only the the macroeconomic aspects but also looking at several sectors. What is happening to auto industry? What is happening to uh, textile industry, uh, what is happening to the medical supply chain, and so on. So I'm currently working on that uh, for a wide range of uh, clients, uh, which are predominantly public organizations. So uh, in the next few weeks, uh, some of the reports uh, of what I'm doing will be published, and I'll keep you posted, and the viewers also posted on that. That would be great. Yep. Thanks, thanks, Dr. Badri. Actually, like, you know, the body of work which you are carrying, like, you know, it, it would take me hours to explain the great things you are doing. In fact, some of the uh, the writings you have done on, on blockchain, on the supply chain and transparency is, is, is really very, very helpful for people like us who are more of doers. And, and, and thanks for doing that. So that brings us to the, our first question. Uh, as you know, that COVID is unlike anything the world has seen so far. And things would be very, very different post-COVID. You being someone who has been working closely on economic models, connecting economies to countries, as well as at the same time also interacting and working with a lot of startups as mentor and advisor, as well as your, your own company, which is very recent. Uh, I would like to understand from you what, according to you, will be the impact of COVID on startup ecosystem and subsequent economic downturn? Uh, so uh, this is a very nice question and very, very relevant for uh, today's uh, environment. Uh, so I think startups are going to face uh, both, uh, you know, opportunities and threats. Uh, let me, I'm a very optimistic person. So let me start about, uh, start talking about the opportunities first, the positive aspects. Mm -hmm. And then I think threats we all know already. Uh, I don't, I will come to that later. But, uh, you know, uh, when I talk about it, you will say we already know. Right? And I, I'm sure many of you also know the opportunities, uh, but st I'll still uh, outline some of them. Uh, so I think uh, like uh, the first first uh, set of opportunities is surrounding the solutions to the problems we are facing. So the problems we are facing are enormous. Not many people have the right solutions. Um, and so we need startups to uh, work on technologies to uh, at the moment, you know, solve the problems they're facing right now with, you know, contra contact tracing, for example, um and 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 a lot of lot of other uh, using technology to basically you know even artificial intelligence data science big data analytics i i personally feel that um, there are a few organizations 
that are making good use of uh, all these uh, technologies and coming up with some publicly useful information. Like I'm proud to be associated with one of them, which is uh, the University of Washington Seattle's uh, in uh, Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, IHME. And they have been doing some analytics and releasing some information on this. But I feel that uh, that is not sufficient. We have this IHMA that is doing it here. Uh, and you have um, uh, John Hopkins University, which is in um, Maryland. And WHO is doing some work on this, World Health Organization. Uh, and in India, I think there is this Arogya Setu app that has been um, doing some good work. And there are many other uh, apps that are coming up. Uh, I think startups can get into this area. Um, and, and I think uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, in terms of revenue, revenue and profits and so on, uh, probably uh, many people may say that, you know, we should not be opportunistic and this is a sad situation. And we shouldn't think of making money. And I, I also probably uh, respect that sentiment. And maybe the startups can first look for opportunities where uh, there's also government funding to do some of these things. Government is also releasing a lot of funds to come up with these technologies and so on. So they can look around what is happening both in the uh, uh, governments all over the world are coming up with uh, some grants for, for these things. So that is one thing. So at least they can recover costs. Uh, I mean, they may not be looking for profits, but at least they can recover uh, costs. Secondly, this can actually lead to uh, like whatever technology they are developing now can do two things in the future after we recover from COVID crisis. First thing is to um, uh, be very helpful in this type of even smaller epidemics that may happen in the future. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully this kind of pandemic shouldn't happen in the future, but but uh, even when you have some small things like what, what, what happened with Ebola, swine flu, or some of the other things, SARS and so on, the things that happened in the past, if they come again, these things can be very helpful. And even if a pandemic happens again, uh, they can be helpful. So that is one, one kind of things. And, and maybe they can also look at some other use cases as we go forward. There could be many other use cases they can think of. So this is the first uh, set of opportunities, I think. The second set of opportunities is, is probably more broad. Uh, and that is about, um, you know, we already see uh, enormous uh, demand for digital economy in general. Digital transformation is happening at a much higher pace than economists and others predicted. So we were expecting that the world will become completely completely digitally transformed by maybe 2030 or so, uh, depending on the different studies. But now I think that's happening in 2020. So we are already witnessing huge, huge transformation and digital transformation is happening. Like even this, the idea of webinars is, it has been around for a while, but now now it is becoming like uh, pretty much a part of our life. Um, when I talk to some people, they, they're saying that I'm uh, from uh, 6 a.m. in the morning till 11 p.m. in the night, I'm in some webinar. Right? <laughs> so so, so now I'm, I'm myself uh, being part of many of these webinars. And, and I think that's that's uh, that's a huge thing, like working from home uh, uh, and, and, um, and, and also like working from home is one big thing because there are many things that come with this. One, one is the Zoom kind of, apps uh, which are going to be proliferate and probably uh, developing such apps uh, meeting apps uh, we, are, we are not going to be tired of that we, we are going to we are going to be looking for many options because we people say there are problems with one app uh, as opposed to another app and so on we can always come up with startups can always come up with a new app uh, which can help meetings for example data sharing um, and, and are also optimizing cloud services there are so many cloud companies how can what to think of how can a company decide which cloud service is good for them so so they can actually do a lot of uh, this kind of value added uh, services or new technologies uh, which can be which can completely you know transform the way we work from home um, so i think that is uh, and that is just one example working from home is just one example but there are going to be many other things for example uh, restaurants are going to be changing their the way they're working i i don't think uh, people are going to visit restaurants for uh, you know maybe a few more months but even even after the lockdown is over because people are going to be you know careful and uh, wary uh, but eventually when uh, when even during the transition phase and even when later things are better they're going to think about alternative business models even when people are willing to eat they're going to 
probably eat at home. They, they may buy uh, stuff, but they may want to eat at home. So the delivery, uh, like Swiggy kind of things in India that they, they have, that probably there'll be more demand for such apps uh, and, and, and many, many things like that. No, not just, I'm just giving you some examples, but there could be, in general, there could be more, more demand for delivery uh, and home, home delivery. Maybe 3D printing can become a big thing because, because of uh, lack of uh, workers and, and so on. So that is, that could be another, another thing. And, and also, if you want to, uh, for example, in India, we have been talking about uh, production moving from uh, China to India because of various reasons. And if that has to happen, the scale ad- scale is a big disadvantage for India and scale of production. If scale of production shouldn't uh, needn't be an issue, then 3D printing is the way to go. Because if you have 3D printing, then it doesn't matter. Scale doesn't matter. If you have 10 3D printers, you'll you'll produce uh, 10x the number of output uh, than with a single 3D printer. Whereas if you have a factory, larger the factory, uh, the more you can produce, uh, relatively speaking. So, so these are these are some some things, and and, and all the, the 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 background services, uh, even consulting, technology consulting can also improve because people are going to be confused. What is good for me? What there are so many mm-hmm. things in the market. So I think there there are going to be a lot of these opportunities. Uh, so let probably at that note, I can end the positive side of it. And um, and I can probably keep talking about more, uh, but uh, but I think this gives you a broad idea. One is sure. during the COVID crisis, the opportunities that are coming up, and post COVID, what are the different opportunities that are coming up? So, and 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 then similarly, uh, when I say opportunities, there are also funding associated with that, market associated with that, and so on. So now the, the these are the opportunities, and the third uh, main main thing is. Who is going to pay? Where are we going to get investment investors? Um, and what is going to happen to the market? Because pe- if people are not spending enough, uh, if let's say coming back to the examples I gave you before, if uh, let's say post COVID people are just not uh, going to spend on anything, they're going to be very careful what they spend on because there is also a big issue of unemployment. People are going to it's going to be very difficult to get back all the people in in, in job market. And until now, we had a relatively prosperous world, and people had a lot of lot of uh, startups uh, focus on a um, lot of value-added services and luxury services and so on, and and they may uh, probably be affected. Uh, so uh, so I think uh, the yeah, investment and market both are going to be um, uh, difficult uh, going forward. Um, uh, and, and both because of the lack of uh, prosperity. On, only in times of prosperity, uh, the whole world uh, think of, thinks of uh, you know uh, new technologies, new ideas, and so on. So I think given the given the lack of prosperity, I think that's going to be uh, hugely challenging and, and and can can be a threat. So I think I think I probably gave you pretty high level idea of opportunities and threats. So for for the startups. You know, the very, 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 very insightful for sure, right? You know, this, this perspective is very important. I had a lot of uh, discussion with a lot of people with different backgrounds and uh, the way you have articulated it is, is just awesome. Like, you know, it will give a lot of uh, clarity to the startups. Uh, so like, you know, the startup is one part of it. Now, COVID is already impacting different sectors, right? And, and even the countries differently. So when we see like, you know, tourism and as you rightly said, restaurants, right? Uh, you see like next for a few months, Definitely, people would not love to be socially together and eat food there. Uh, similarly, like some countries, they have taken care of this this in, um, pandemic better than others. So you find that different countries are, come, and and sectors being having different impacts. Uh, we would know this better than you having developed global. You would know it better than uh, like you know when you have developed global economical models and data sets used by thousands of researchers across the world. Models that employ applied mathematics, simulation, and static, statistical regressions to make futuristic prediction and forecast. So, like you know, something which you have, which is bread and butter for you, right? You would like to understand from you what, in your view, would be the impact of COVID on business globally. Yeah, uh, thank you for that question. Uh, in, in fact, it relates to a lot of my ongoing work, actually. So, so based on what I've been doing uh, for different organizations. Uh, I can uh, say with uh, some level of confidence that uh, uh, we uh, we are definitely entering um, a time of uh, recession globally. We are already into recession, and 
uh, it's not only me even the uh, organizations like imf have already confirmed um, so so we are already into recession globally uh, when the problem started uh, maybe two months ago uh, we were thinking that uh, like even people who are saying that this is going to be as bad as 2008 global financial crisis uh, they were kind of uh, um, you know uh, you know criticized or made fun of by the mainstream uh, people that they these, these are too pessimistic people uh, but actually right now we are at the verge of thinking whether this will be any better than great depression so of 1930 so so this wow. is like unprecedented in the lifetimes of many of us um, we have very few people who are alive now who looked who had uh, faced great depression uh, you know maybe the, some of them could have been babies at that time but uh, people who really know what happened then as a mature person would have been would, would be very few or at least from the books and uh, news and so on we can learn that it was a really bad uh, situation so i feel that uh, like based on our uh, predictions we feel that you know it's going to be pretty bad situation all over the world because for a simple reason you don't have need even these models for 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 telling this fact because it's a, it's a simple arithmetic if you do if everything in the economy closes globally for you know 5 days 10 day, 5 days 10 days then you are losing let's say 5 by 365 of the output right or right. if it is for 10 days you are losing 10 divided by 365 of output. and mm -hmm. now you imagine we are closing for 3 4 5 months then it's not single digit reduction it's 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 almost it's pretty sure that we are going to face like double digit uh, reduction in uh, gdp uh, so so that is you know at a, at a high level that is that is what is happening and there is a debate about uh, whether it's going to be u shaped recovery where we go down and stay down for a while and then come up after we find a vaccine or medicine um, and and some people say no it may be v shaped uh, we are already we are almost there with the medicine we are almost there with the vaccine so as soon as we are there confidence will increase and people will start ramping up everything uh, my my feeling is more more along the lines of u we are going to face some kind of a u shaped recovery so i think we are st st falling very steeply now and and maybe we'll then we'll look at a period where the fall will be less steep will be more flat and then uh, i'm talking about gdp and not, not the covid cases <laughs> so yeah when the covid cases become steep there maybe the gdp also will become steep uh, you know flat here and then then we may stay low for some time before before recovering and uh, in terms of recovery uh, like maybe i'll first talk about the macro aspects then i'll come to give some examples of sectors uh, I, i'm still talking about macro so the falling and staying uh, still and then maybe coming up mm -hmm. and how would how would we come up it can only happen uh, with two two things two different aspects one is the stimulus that is being uh, worked by the governments uh, governments definitely have to be very generous they have to they have to forget about all the deficit considerations for now uh, this is an emergency and it, it it actually relates to lives of people so first that, that is something that has to be done definitely a lot of stimulus income security has to be ensured otherwise you're going to see massive unrest uh, all over the world uh, that is first second is i think second point relates to uh, our first first question uh, the startup uh, community and not only startup community but also industrial community in general should uh, chip in so they have to come in and uh, i think the solution for this whole issue is going to be more bottom up than top down so top down will be just an initial trigger so top down investment will pr probably make sure that at least people are not protesting uh, people have enough money to you know have their food and shelter and so on for one or two three months uh, and then in that time the startups and the industries should start reworking all their plans and they have to come up they have to imagine how this uh, 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 this whole thing is going to be and then uh, uh and, and change their plans and then come up with the recovery so that is that is how the the recovery might happen so this is a uh, kind of a macro view in terms of sectors uh, i think uh, maybe in first in terms of countries uh, i'll first talk about countries then come to sectors in terms of countries uh, mostly the developed countries are going to face huge huge recession they are going to 
uh, be thrown back many decades in terms of development, uh, not in terms of development, but mainly in terms of incomes. Uh, people are going to lose income quite a bit. Uh, lots of like in US, you already uh, you have seen a huge unemployment now, all-time high unemployment. It's a massive change from three, four months ago when US had uh, all-time low unemployment, and now now they have all-time low, all-time high un unemployment. So uh, most of the developed countries are hardly, uh, you know, hugely, hugely hit. They're most hard hit. Uh, the developing countries, particularly you know, China. Uh, was hugely hit in the beginning, uh, but actually now, if you think about it, uh, China's impact impact on China has been almost localized. It has been pretty much Hubei province and some of the surrounding province. Beijing and Shanghai are, are pretty solid, and now the whole economy is back on track, and they're they're working very hard, and they're giving supplying medicines and test kits uh, to the world and. Uh, you know, defective or non-defective, they're, they're producing something. Uh, they started producing something. So, so that's a huge, uh, huge thing. Um, which and China is actually leading the world in that, saying that okay, we can come back and we can uh, return to normal. So China is doing that, and also predictions say that uh, many developing countries, like even India, will not be as much hit as the developed countries. So we will still have a small positive growth. Because we we were earlier we were thinking of something like six percent seven percent GDP growth, and now we may look at something like one percent or half a percent GDP growth. So we may still grow marginally, or maybe we may even contract a little bit, but not nothing like U.S. probably is going to sh shrink by contract by five or six percent, and India may probably either not shrink or or maybe shrink by one percent or something. So that's that's the uh, thing for India and uh, China probably may be similar to India, like half a percent, one percent increase or decrease. Uh, whereas uh, some of the Southeast Asian countries also may have similar kind of things: small, small growth or no growth or small negative, uh, you know, reduction. But the countries like uh, Vietnam, uh, Brunei, um, uh, and and um, Myanmar, and some of the countries that were very less affected, or uh, Taiwan. Uh, these countries were very less affected. They had some very good uh, policies, particularly tra travel related and tracing, contract contact tracing and so on. And they were pretty much able to avoid the whole thing. Um, and uh, their cases are still less than 1,000. Um, and, and these countries are doing well and uh, they have taken up a lot of slack from China. Um, and some of these countries have taken, like whatever the, the world is reducing its trade with China and that reduction is not coming to countries like India, but it's going to other smaller countries like you know Vietnam and uh, uh, Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, those kind of countries. So, uh, so that is that is that is uh, as much as I can say in terms of countries. Uh, in terms of sectors, uh, I think uh, travel, tourism is hugely affected, as you know, and many of the aircrafts uh, or airlines have already planned reduction in their fleet uh, they, uh, permanently, not temporarily, not for this time, but they said, okay, for permanently we'll retire a few airplanes because we don't expect this travel to pick up anytime soon, uh, anytime in the next one, two years or so. And even it may even become a permanent feature that people are just going to travel less and do all coordination online and so on. So travel is going to be hugely hit. Restaurants, at, as we already discussed, restaurants, uh, hotels, all the things surrounding travel, uh, you know, air travel, road travel, uh, even trains, and um, and also uh, uh, hotels, restaurants, and uh, maybe uh, all the other tourist things like tourist uh, activities, uh, visiting you know uh, exotic places and so on. So the countries that uh, are highly tourism dependent in the world, they are uh, hugely hit. And even in countries like India, the, the cities that are highly tourism dependent, they are hit a lot. So, and, and like places of worship also may, may see less, less uh, of people coming. So any industry or any facility that requires gathering, depends on gathering of people, is going to be uh, contracting over time. Uh, secondly, uh, or, or relatedly, uh, auto industry will be affected, automotive industry because there will be less demand for transportation and hence less demand for uh, you know, automobiles. And uh, particularly if global auto industry was facing a kind of recession and an Indian, Indian auto industry was facing probably even more of that, 
and now that's going to be even more hit uh, and then uh, then also you know other industries like uh, uh, electronics uh, you know textiles apparel um, uh, and even even medical devices medical equipment pharmaceuticals uh, all these industries are going to be hit uh, medical devices and pharmaceuticals they are going to face a very strange problem where on the demand is going to increase but the supply is going to be constrained because we are the globe we are they're very integrated to the global supply chain so so for example when uh, china is not uh, or we are not able to deal with china we are not able to trade with china and other countries then we may we may and with all the difficulties in transportation and logistics uh, there could be some problems in the supply chain to produce pharmaceuticals and medicals and 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 then because of that the demand also may be may may readjust and then there could be difficulties there and in terms of auto and uh, textiles and electronics there also there are, there are supply chain issues involved and uh, and anything uh, to do with income like income related uh, reduction i think the only sector that may be uh, relatively less affected from a demand side is uh, the um, the agricultural sector because uh because people are it's, it's a necessity uh, in economics we say it has uh, it is inelastic so whether your uh, your income is going to fall a lot or increase uh, increase you are still going to consume the amount of food that you have to consume so so the agricultural sector would be relatively relatively better i, I would not say it, it will prosper but it will be relatively better um yeah so i think uh, that gives you a good sense of what is happening globally countries and and sectors uh, hopefully perfect very very insightful very very insightful and uh, I'm, i'm so happy that we are having the discussion uh, because it will give a pathway to a lot of people to understand uh, where they should find their next big thing so thanks thanks a lot for a great answer uh, so that brings us to our question uh, so i would like to understand with you that actually uh, covid is not just an health issue or a social business or economic issue it is also a personal crisis for a lot of us right uh, where people love to travel people love to go to restaurants people love to like you know have uh, social connects uh, all of that has stopped at the same time it also is impacting everybody's pocket because there would be for sure the, the job losses there would be salary cuts uh, i would like to understand from you that uh, if we have to give one suggestion to people around the world that what they should do so that they can emerge a better version of themselves in current difficult situation yeah so um, i think uh, yeah that is that is very true uh, it's a, it's a personal issue uh, i think in maybe i can give you examples from what i am doing and and, and then we can talk about um, uh, general uh, observations uh, so I, i i usually travel quite a lot uh, whether i like it or not i, I travel a lot uh because for for business i had to travel particularly i make a lot of overseas trips so even in february march i was in traveling to india bangladesh and sri lanka and 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 so on so uh, i tra- so uh in one sense uh, this period has been uh, uh somewhat positive for me of course i, I feel very sad about uh, the happenings around me you know people suffering and so on that that makes me sad and i I think about it a lot and a uh, lot of my work now is also uh, related to that uh, but uh, on, a, on a personal level i i feel somewhat uh, more calm and satisfied because because i have been able to avoid my travel uh, which actually uh, helps me you know uh, spend more time with family and uh, and also from a professional perspective for my, me i am able to get more time to finish a lot of pending things i had and also contact a lot of uh, maybe past clients uh, past collaborators whom i haven't been able to talk because i've been traveling a lot and been very busy uh, so i think that 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 uh, reconnecting uh, has been happening Pro- professional reconnecting even personal reconnecting i've been able to get in touch with my old friends too uh and and also family yeah okay, reconnecting with family spending more time with my immediate family uh, so so those those things have been uh, really really positive uh in terms of uh, and and also i mean another personal thing i would say is that uh yeah we 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 do 
uh, you know uh, eat outside uh, quite a bit both for professional reasons and also for you know family get together and so on and that has reduced a lot and i i think uh, probably if i uh, do some health test uh, uh, about my param- personal parameters probably i'll be improving because i'm just eating home homemade food <laughs> so so i think that's 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 could that could be another another uh, you know positive thing um, and i also see that here in seattle i don't see huge uh, difference in the environment because it's already pretty pretty clean here we have a lot of greenery and so on but i hear uh, from my parents and many of my relatives and friends in india that they can see visible change in the environment the environment is you know really improving and so on and, and like some people say from delhi and from punjab you can see himalayas in india so 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 those 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 are really positive things um but uh, yeah i, I think uh, th- these are the things that i have been seeing from a personal life perspective and in general uh, i i would say that probably what i can say from my recent experience with this is uh, first uh, get back in touch like uh, maybe there are two types of people one type of people who are uh, heavily affected even financially Uh, by this crisis they are losing jobs or losing income and so on and um, other set of people who are probably well off uh, they are doing well probably you know they are doing uh, more work like uh, like me i'm not doing much more work than i was doing before the crisis because I, as i told you i'm doing a lot of projects on this um for them what i would like i, I would i would categorize people into these two categories uh, maybe i'll first talk about the second one that's easier Uh, because people who are, don't have to worry about uh, their financial issues and so on uh, for them uh, it is the best time to reconnect with uh, first spend time with family uh, and reconnect with uh, friends and uh, co- collaborators and clients and so on and offer uh, help to them any kind of help maybe you can say just calling people or emailing would itself be so nice because they'll be happy that you know people are contacting them when they are kind of when the whole world is going through a crisis if somebody checks on you you feel good that okay or somebody has asked me and that happiness is one thing second thing is uh, it may lead to something like in in my case i've been talking to people and that's leading to some more collaborations and so on so so i think that is a very positive of taking and even even when you're doing well now uh, people who are doing well now uh, there could be a suspicion in their mind that maybe this crisis is going to affect me um something is going to happen i may lose job or something and uh, they don't have to worry about it if you basically it's all about connecting you you reconnect with people and you may find something if something happens so you, it's kind of an insurance against uh, something uh, bad that might happen so coming back to the first set of people i really don't have uh, a lot of mean, meaningful advice maybe because i i cannot say from a personal experience but i think uh, what i can say is that um it is probably uh, relevant for people who have worked for many years and suddenly they are losing jobs uh, or maybe the the poorer uh, daily wage workers and so on or maybe students who are just graduating uh, finding it difficult to find jobs i think to all of them one thing one the only thing i can say is that not to lose hope and uh, basically uh, go back to my first answer uh, think about how they can use their skill and experience and knowledge to solve the crisis now be part of many of the volunteer networks uh, or startups that are uh, going to face a funding crisis so they can actually work freely for them and and this working freely uh, or you know volunteering for 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 profit volunteering for non profit existed uh, uh, you know uh, forever but volunteering for for profits uh, startups is a relatively new thing and it's happening hugely in the us and uh, in the west in particular i think in india it's relatively new i think it's also picking up there where you know students and fresh graduates they work freely for startups maybe with a small equity or uh, something in return um, and and i think that culture is going to be very helpful in this situation so they can actually uh, like the professionals who are losing jobs professionals who have good skill sets and knowledge and so on they can make use of this period uh, like both students and experienced people to reach out to startups reach out to these kind of uh, tech tech companies and other companies and uh, offer their services offer their experience offer their knowledge uh, at any cost like fee or uh, nominal cost or something or equity or something 
and that would go a long way in their career uh, because they, they at least they don't have to show a gap in their uh, cv and they may either get something in return or or or, or uh, you know at the minimum they have some uh, some work to do and 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 that's going to help others so i think that's what i i can uh, say from my experience and for these two types of people i can broadly classify but that that's a great answer the working for free part is, is is awesome because if nothing else at least you learn new things like and and learning goes whole life so that's that's a great advice so this bring us to our last question and uh, uh, this is very very simple for someone with such a huge experience like you uh, as you have explained that uh, we are seeing more of a u uh, curve when we talk about rebound so we would be there in the bottom for some time for sure now if if you have to advise two things to start up an entrepreneur what they should be doing so when the upstream comes in they are prepared to be the unicorn so what would be those two silver bullets from you yeah sure i think um, uh, again uh, some of uh, the thoughts that i uh, discussed before may be relevant here uh, i think uh, uh, first thing is uh, they should um, uh, so there are a few things they can follow the first thing is they can Uh, think about uh, doing uh, kind of cost budgeting so so basically they they are surviving this crisis by um, spending bare minimum uh, and not uh, and being empathetic to their uh, employees and so on and have some kind of uh, arrangement with them rather than you know letting them go uh, so keep keep their uh, most uh, cherished resources uh, both human and capital and uh, other you know working capital kind of resources intact by doing whatever it takes um and and of course uh, let go the luxuries let go the anything beyond that you can cut down cut down the costs uh, anything beyond that so i think basically just stay afloat uh, that is the first thing during this you uh, the bottom part and falling and bottom part uh, second thing would be to be ready for a uh, resilience be be ready for uh, coming back of the economy Uh, how do you be ready uh, first um, uh, think about uh, various scenarios uh, like like what i do i think about the macro level scenarios and uh, they should really make use of this time to look at the various studies done at a global level national level by different companies and so on that many of them are available freely nowadays i even see i'm very pleasantly surprised that in whatsapp groups they are being shared many of the reports by you know bcg or kpmg and so on they are shared in what whatsapp groups so i think this information is widely available so you can take all of them try to get insights plan for what is coming uh, really think analytically how it affects your uh, business uh, i think that that uh, startups should startup entrepreneurs should have that vision um, of an uh, of a, what a macro economist would think they should really think about that and and they are uh, they they should really think about the top down things how how can that affect whatever happens at the top line how will it, how will it affect their things and there are a lot of things they can learn on that and more than learning just be uh, updated on on the information that is happening so be ready for that think about all the different scenarios so i think i think that will be the second thing and the third thing would be to basically think about how would you um um where do you see yourself like the like typical interview question people ask where do you see yourself in 5 years 10 years <laughs> where do you see yourself in like 2 3 months that is that is the question you should ask yourself like what what, what do you see yourself what do you visualize yourself uh, doing given that given the scenarios that you have already looked at what are, how how are things going to change uh, like i think here whatever i told earlier might might help because if you are a restaurant you are going to be ready for e-commerce you are going to be ready for deliveries right so rather than waiting for people to come in and sit in your tables and chairs maybe you can sell off your uh, tables and chairs and start investing in your digital transformation um right. uh, and in fact i see i hear that already happening uh, here in the in the us uh, in in seattle here i see that uh, there are many even the many uh, asian uh, indian restaurants uh, they are actually reaching out the social media and saying that we have clear and sale we have very good sale and you don't we don't we, you don't have to come and sit here we will you order we'll keep the food outside you can come and collect it nobody will touch it we'll use gloves and so on so the cleanliness part is going to be uh, cleanliness and being uh, you know being uh, careful about uh, you know the contagion 
uh, would be an important part for the restaurants, uh, for example, uh, and then delivery options also should be thought about. So this is just one example. Uh, if, if I, we don't have time to, or even I, I haven't thought about what kind of examples you can give for different industries. But this is an easy example I can give, but you can think about your industry, whichever industry you're working on, see how your customers are going to change and how, you know, what will fall and what will increase? What, what kind of demand demand for what kind of services will fall and what will increase? And what is within your kitty? Like one thing is uh, maybe if you're a restaurant, continue cooking, continue producing food, uh, but then uh, your delivery mode is changing or your how people are going to buy that is going to change. But but imagine a, another kind of entrepreneur who, who senses that the demand for the products itself is going to fall, like whatever products he is producing, that's going to fall. Uh, then he has to think of what are the other products and other services that they can make uh, with the same uh, capital that they have. Uh, like uh, for this, I uh, I know one entrepreneur in Gujarat uh, once approached me uh, that he got he used some subsidy from the government to buy uh, a machine that can make non wovens and now he can do multiple things with that. He can either uh, make a fabric for uh, aeroplane um, uh, or or for uh, cars, uh, or he can make uh, some carpets for the for the for the house. So so he was actually into market research on what would be the best to you. He got the mission now what to produce. So in that sense, if you have that luxury, you can produce multiple things, uh, either uh, services or products. You can think of uh, how to recalibrate. You have been producing something. Now there is no demand for that. You have to produce something else. Uh, how without changing anything, you have the same people, same labor, same capital, but produce something else. So that is another another uh, kind of thing. So so that is uh, the, the third aspect, uh, how to uh, think about uh, calibrate and change things. And... Uh, and the final thing would be to also think about what the uh, what the government is doing, what kind of uh, changes they are bringing in, uh, what is their direction, and and so on. And in this, I I had a, an article I had written for um, um, uh, for, for Indian media where, where I thought about this urban agglomeration when the migrants are moving away from big cities and going to smaller cities. So maybe maybe one uh, one one idea that I had was maybe the government should encourage more industry industrial development in smaller towns, tier two, tier three towns and villages and so on. Say say if that happens, uh, then maybe they have to calibrate their responses accordingly. Maybe if a company is sitting in uh, Mumbai, maybe they should think about moving to maybe a smaller town, maybe because there's going to be more labor available there and so on. So those things have to be uh, you know thought about. And and uh, and I think um, in general, as I told you earlier, uh, they should also think about even in this uh, situation, uh, they should also think about uh, how to contribute to the sol solving of this problem, COVID crisis. Uh, if if you're a tech company, app development company, you can actually develop apps for uh, contact tracing and so on. So I think I think that could be another uh, thing to you know be stay afloat now, and and then you can actually. Uh, popularize your the good things that you have done uh, when you are looking for either government funding or uh, other investors funding later on. Uh, so I think yeah, these are these are some broad ideas and uh, uh, thoughts. Um, yeah. So, great, great, but that 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 was awesome, and I, I strongly believe that a lot of startup uh, uh, would be listening to you, and uh, they would be able to uh, adapt some of themselves as well as adopt some of uh, the recommendations you have given. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. We have come to the end of this discussion. Uh, it was very insightful for me. I've learned a lot of new things from you and uh, look forward to be connected with you in future as well. Uh, thanks a lot uh, from me and my audience. Uh, stay safe. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Deepak. I really enjoyed talking to you and this was an amazing thing. So uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.